Welcome back into Sideline Stories Podcast. This is episode seven with 2016 sharpshooter Ryan Oliver and myself, Connor Fenlon. Be sure to follow our social media accounts on Twitter and Instagram at side underscore stories pod to stay up to date with the latest regarding the podcast. Tonight we are joined by Sienna graduate of 2008, second all-time in threes made at Sienna, an all-MAC tournament member, former Harlem Globetrotter, now current head of Tay Fisher Camp, Tay Firefly Fisher. Thanks for joining us, Tay. Uh, no, thank you for having me. Appreciate it. So catch, catch up, catch all the Santa fans up. You know what, what's what's been the latest with the Tay Fisher clan? Oh man, it's just adding an addition to it. That's <laughs> pretty much all that happened. Uh, I just had a son uh, last year. He's uh, congratulations. Fifteen months now. Thank you. And uh, pretty much the same age as Ron's son. Uh, Ron's son just a couple months older, but. And uh, I think even Alex's daughter as well, you know. Uh, so they're all kind of around that same age. And uh, it's just amazing. You know, fatherhood is, is awesome. Uh, my, uh, my, my wife is also a Sienna graduate as well. So, um, and she works at Sienna in the HEOP um, as a director. So I told her as long as she stays there, my son doesn't have to make a basket at all. Just go ahead and... <laughs> You know, we can keep this Sienna uh, banner up for a long time. <laughs> nah, I, I love to hear that. And, you know, Sienna runs in the family, so you got to keep the tradition going strong. How's, um, how's everything been with, with COVID and quarantine for you guys? Like, how is that adjustment, um, you know? Um, it's been a major adjustment. Um, just like it hit everyone, but it hit everyone just a little bit differently. Um, for me... I retired in September of last year, um, and I was going to use a whole year to just, to myself, you know, relax, get my body right, get my mind right, knowing I just had a son, I wasn't going to jump into anything, really, really emphasize and really put my uh, foot forward with my business, but then COVID hit. So when, once COVID hit, a lot of things stopped, you know, obviously I wasn't able to have the year that I wanted to. Um, and then having my son not being able to really go anywhere and do anything, it kind of made that hard as well. And then my wife was working from home. Um, but it was time that I haven't had in a long time. So even though COVID hit, it was bad, but it was also good in a way because I spent more time with my wife than I've done all the 10 years I was traveling the world. And then I was able to really have some time with my family and, uh, things are coming together. Things are getting a little better here, still not where we want it to be, but, you know, it, it is what it is. You know, the one thing that I always told people is with COVID, we have to work together as a team in order to get this right. And for you two, you guys know how important it is to be a team and rely on each other. But for a lot of people, it's all about being individuals. And that's not how it's going to work right now, because being an individual, you can hurt other people. You can set other people back. So I'm hoping that as a community, as a, uh, you know, as a group, as, a, as, you know, the United States, just around the world, we can just get together and get out of this so we can, you know, move forward in life and do the best we can. Very, very well said. Very well said. But, you know, talking about you, you have your own camp now, you do your workouts. With COVID, how, how has that changed it? I know you're probably doing a little bit more Zoom workouts, maybe one-on-one -on -one workouts. Talk a little bit about that. Yeah, I did a lot of uh, Zoom, which I thought was very beneficial because um, it allowed me to still be with them. Um, I had Ron come in and be a guest speaker, and uh, Ron had me be a guest speaker as well, which I thought was great. I had Kenny Hasbrook as a, as a speaker. I had Teresa Coles as a speaker. So it was great to be able to still um, have that for kids, but also invite my friends and my teammates into it as well. So they were able to hear from their point of view on how they've been affected and what to do. And uh, that bond that I have with all my Sienna teammates and just the Sienna community, that's never going to change. As you can see with me doing virtual trainings, um, it was beneficial because Kenny was in Germany. So he was able to be there on Zoom, which if I had camp, he wouldn't have been able to be there. So I, I definitely appreciate that. You know, it, it shows that um, everybody always told me before I even went to Sienna that they take care of you when you leave. It's still a family when you leave. 
And I never really understood that until it was time for me to graduate. And then thinking about it now, 12 years later, I'm still as close with them as I was when I was there. And uh, I think that means a lot, especially when you're trying to uh, be there with the community and change people's lives. I think that that's when I need to bring on my family and my friends that help me where I am right now and kind of teach them no matter where they are in the world. So thank God for Zoom, because if it wasn't for that, we wouldn't even be having this conversation right now, right? <laughs> That's real. That's real. Zoom has, has changed the way we, we view so many things and we use things in life. And it's good to see you use that platform to help others. Um, let's take it back real quick. Let's talk about the idea of, of your basketball camp. Did you always kind of know growing up and playing a game that you wanted to host one and have one? Was there a camp you went to when you were younger that – you were like, oh, man, this is awesome. Like, I enjoy it. I want to have this. So take us through that process. Yeah, I've always, I mean, uh, I went to numerous camps when I was younger. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of them were local. And then I went to Five Star twice, um, which was a big thing for me. But I wasn't able to go to a lot of ones that I wanted to because financially I just didn't have it. Mm -hmm. But my coaches, they would all like, we would do like car washes in the community that helped raise some money that send me out because because those were like overnights. And uh, mm. I kind of just, I, I loved it. And I started my basketball camp as soon as I graduated from high school. So I was having that, even when I was at Siena, I was having my basketball camps going on. And uh, I just completed year 16. I can't believe I just completed year 16. <laughs> and even though the camp wasn't like I wanted it to be, yeah. it still was something. And at this point right now, something was better than nothing. And uh, it, we all ended up being safe. Numbers were small. Uh, I had a lot of strict guidelines and precautions. But the camp, it, it's been awesome, and I love it. So within my camp, I have a breast cancer event. I have a preseason workout. I have training. I have um, so many other things that branch off of the nucleus of the camp. And that's where I want to put my focus into because – it was hard doing it while I was on the road all the time. Even though I still, still maintained it, it was hard to do. Now, I kind of just want to just focus on it because if I go into another job, I'm back to where I was when I was with the Globe Charters. So I just want to see what it can do for me because whenever you start something from scratch, it's considered like your baby. Like you want to take care of it because you know how hard it was to start it. So I want to see where it can go. And maybe one day, maybe me and Ron can do something together because I know he runs his own camp. I'm just trying to see where things can lead us because I feel like um, friendships turn to brotherhood. You know, I learned that not only with Sienna, but I learned that with the Globe Trials. When you're with the same group all the time and you guys are trying to accomplish the same goal and you guys are, are supporting each other, that has to maintain even when basketball is not going on. And I'm hoping that that can happen one day. Yeah. What, where, where, why do you think it's so important for you to give back, not only to the Albany area, but also the Kingston area where you grew up? You know, whenever you walk into a gym or any of these workouts, you're a celebrity. You know, everyone, Tay, 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 they all want to be a part of it. Where, where does that come from? Um, my work ethic, my drive, my dedication, my passion, um, and just who I am. You know, I, I – you know, like, I, I, I make the connection with people first. That's how it always is. You got to make that connection first. And uh, that's how I think I also was great at being a globe charter, and why I think being a globe charter was meant for me because um, it's not meant for everybody. Let's just be honest. You know, the traveling, the changing people's lives, the tricks, the just going and doing it every single day is not meant for everybody. But I felt like it was my calling. It was something I even did with my team. Even with Sienna, I was like the lone senior. I was the captain as a junior. You know, Coach Mack put me in that position. I was able to just keep my team together. I was able to lead by example. And then I think when I left, Ron and Kenny and Alex and Rossiter and, and, and then it passed on to Odie and Clarence and everybody else. And that's how it started, you know. But Coach Mack coming in started at first. And then he allowed me to take over. And then from there, it just trickled down. And I'm hoping that Carm was a part of that whole process too. So now, even though it's been X amount of years since Carm became the head coach, Carm was a part of that Mac, Coach Mac error. Um, and I think that he's bringing it back right now. And 
I just always want to be there for people, man. You know, people was there for me. My teachers were there for me. Um, I went to school and I graduated from Siena with my bachelor's in psychology and my minor in education. Then I went to the College of St. Rose and got my, uh, um, my, uh, I ended up graduating and getting my master's in uh, childhood education. So being a school teacher is just like being a coach. You know, even though I'm not a teacher right now in a classroom, that court in my camp is my classroom. So I have different kids at different levels, but I have to meet their expectations. I got to push them. I got to tell them what it's all about. And the one thing I love that I think that I do a great job with is I try to teach these kids that basketball is fun. When you come to the Harlem Globetrotter game, it's fun. You love it. You laugh. You enjoy it. I don't want to put pressure on them. I just want them to enjoy it. The fun, the hard work will come from them, but you got to enjoy the game first. And uh, I think that's important. And that's how I'm going to teach my son. You know, everybody's going to teach their son and their, or their daughter or their niece or nephew differently. But for my son, I'm going to let him just have fun, do all sports, enjoy it. And the hard work just comes from you and loving it so much. Nah, that's real. That's definitely real. And um, talking about special connections you made with individuals who went to your camp, correct me if I'm wrong, but there's a special player that played in the MAC um, during my era that you had a special relationship with from your hometown, Justin Robinson. Uh, oh. Talk about watching him grow um, as a person first and foremost, but also as a player, then, you know, unfortunately, you know, he has some of his bigger games at the TU, but just talk about, you know, you rooting for him, but also, you know, you, I know, I, it brings me back too, man. I was just like, man, but talk about that relationship and just watching him grow into the pro he is now. Um, Justin's like my little brother, you know, like he was looking up to me when he was, he was like the ball boy for, for Kingston. And then when I had my, um, I think it was, it was like my birthday or something. I don't know if it's because I graduated or something. I don't remember what it was, but he came there as well. He was just a little kid and he always had his Sienna shirt and because he just wanted to be like me. You know, obviously he went a different route, but I was able to create the path for him and then let him just branch out and go his own route. And he's doing an awesome job. I'm happy that he played in the same conference. Um, I didn't like that he was having his biggest games at the TU. Me either. Me either. <laughs> <laughs> uh, because he would throw it in my face all the time. But he loved playing at the TU. He like because the TU is different from any other um, game in the league. You know, it's kind of like when you get to play at the Garden. It's like, oh, I get to play at the Garden. I'm going to have my best game at the Garden. Just like any other, any, any other NBA player, like Kobe loved playing at the Garden because that's it's the Garden. And I felt like people felt like that with the TU Center is whenever they played there, they wanted to make sure it was their best game. And he always told me that before the game. And uh, he did have one of his best games, but we've also had our best games. And we also had our MAC championship there, which was great moments. So like, he had his best moments, but we had more great moments as individuals with our team and with our uh, program. So um, I'm happy he's doing well. Uh, and uh, him and Ron played against each other, and they sent me a picture with them two together and sent it to me. I thought that was pretty cool because um, any picture, man, when you're on the road makes a difference because sometimes it gets like it gets hard out there, you know? So whenever my family sends me pictures or my friends send me pictures, it makes me smile and it might get me through another week of being on the road because, you know, it's hard out there, you know, and I know that everybody knows that if you play basketball. So, uh, you know, obviously coming out of Kingston down the street from Albany, what, what was it about Siena that it was a right fit for you? Um, it was just, it was the TU center. That was one of the things that uh, gravitated me towards Siena and I played for the city rocks as well. So um, I played for the City Rocks in 11th grade, and it was the best experience I've had because I played for a lot of local little small teams for AAU. And then they just said, you know what, man, you should play. Let's get you to a bigger program. And they got me there. And then once I played for the City Rocks, I had an awesome uh, summer. I like did really good in like Peach Jam 
and a lot of um, Boo Williams of Virginia. I did a lot of – had a lot of good games. Um, I was one of the shooters, obviously, and I was alongside Steve D'Agostino. Oh, wow. Who, uh, yep, who went to um, St. Rose. And uh, we had some great teams. We had a great team. And then pri- uh, right after I finished my City Rock season, I scored 61 against Albany High. Like, my first game – in a tournament um, in high school. Then that's when Sienna started recruiting me. And uh, I loved Coach Lanier at the time. I thought he was a great uh, person that I wanted. I went to a game at the TU and saw the 6,000 fans there. I said, this is something I want to be a part of. And it was close to home. Um, I wanted to be close to my mom. I wanted to be close to my family. I felt that was important. And uh, it was just the right fit for me. And I'm happy I made that decision. And even when I had the opportunity to leave with Jack McClinton and a few others when Coach Lanier got fired, I stayed. And it was because I made that commitment to Sienna. People leave. It happens. People are happy. But when I make a decision, I stick with it. That's just the way I am. That could have ended up being a wrong decision for me. But at the end of the day, I was going to push through, hoping that the next coach was going to be good and knowing that I had a full scholarship that I was going for because I knew that that was important because without that, I don't know if I would have had an opportunity to set the bar high for my family since graduating from high school, uh, college was something that hasn't happened in my family before. Was that a, was that 61 point game in Albany or in Kingston? It was in Albany. Oh, wow. <laughs> it was in Albany and we only won by seven. Oh, wow. So, I know some people are like, 61, man, y'all must have killed them. I'm like, no, <laughs> man, like all 61 points was needed. Yeah. It wasn't one of those, I beat you guys by 40. Let me just keep them in the game. Yeah. Um, so it, it was a big game. And, uh, you know, I did my thing. I, I and, and we won the game. That was, was the most important. You know, I'm, I'm really, I'm still that same way. I'm very competitive. I love the win. Um, but I also know when I lose, I just got to keep working hard. And uh, it, I, I felt like it, it's just, it's still in me today, you know, and I, and I love that. I love that. People don't understand the value of sports and how it plays in your lifestyle. And uh, I'm like that in everything I do. That's real, man. Sports is so relatable to the real world. It's, it's crazy, like, when you really think about it. <laughs> and um, it's crazy because you even know when you deal with people who, Oh, I've never been in with sports. Right. Yeah. You just tell. <laughs> it's like, man, like, I wish that you played sport. Do you understand this concept we're talking about right here, man? Uh, but hey, man, it is what it is, man. You know, uh, that's the whole part about teaching people as well, you know. So I'm happy about it. Nah, that's, that's real, Tay. I, I definitely feel that. Um, talk about setting the bar high for your family and, and the education piece. Talk about getting your master's. What was the inspiration behind it? Um, you said you just got it recently. So did you do online classes or you're traveling? Talk about that schedule that you had to do. Well, well, what people don't know is that when I graduated from Siena, Coach Mack was trying his best to get me overseas. And I, I had a, a few opportunities to go with a few friends and uh, try that option as well. But I wanted to do it on my own. I wanted, I wanted... Like, I had a few friends that was like, hey, come over here and come stay with me, like over in Germany, and I'll get you in some situations. But I just, I, I wanted people to want me so I can get that opportunity. You know, I didn't want people helping. I, I felt like all I needed was an opportunity. I'm still, that's the way I am. I'm all about opportunity, man. You give me the opportunity, I'll show you. And if I fail, I fail. But I can't fail unless I get that opportunity first. You know, and uh, I didn't get an opportunity. So what I did was I went to the College of St. Rose and I already started my master's. I thought basketball was over. I thought it was just over. The Globetrotters did, they did draft me in 2008. I went to the tryout, but I didn't make the team. That's what made me go start my master's. And I thought to myself, well, maybe basketball just isn't it. As I was doing my master's, I completed one year. And then the Globe Charters called me again and said, you know what, Tay, we wanted you. We just didn't have any space. Will you mind coming to another tryout? 
And I was like, man, I'm already heading in this direction already. But I said, man, basketball is like my love, man. Like I worked so hard at it. I might as well give it another chance. And I did even better than I did the first time. And they had no choice but to take me. And as I was doing that, I was still completing my master's at the same time. I just wasn't telling anybody. So it took me 10 years or probably like nine years to complete my master's while I was traveling the world because I'm in Italy trying to do it or I come home in the summer and I'm taking classes. All I needed was teachers to be willing to help me because maybe I'm in a different time zone or maybe I can't do certain things. And St. Rose did a great job with giving me the right teachers to help me. And uh, it was important for me because when I graduated from Siena, my mom didn't attend because she lost one of her legs. So her being able to be there, well, she didn't lose her leg at that time, but she was struggling to walk. So my mom didn't see me graduate from Siena. And throughout that time, she lost both of her legs while I was traveling the world. So I wanted to graduate and get my master's so my mom can see me graduate. And she was front and center. St. Rose did a great job. And I graduated at the TU Center, which was even better. You know, so like it felt like I was home, oh, you yeah. know. And my mom and my dad was front row. And that it was all about walking across that stage. And it was on Mother's Day, just hearing them call my name so I can say, Mom, I did it for you. And I was the first to not only get a Division One scholarship, play sports, graduate, with a bachelor's, but also graduate with my master's. And I set the bar for my family, you know, and it isn't that I'm saying I set the bar high where I want my son to do the same thing, but I wanted to just be my best. And I felt like as a black man, I wanted to do the best I possibly can and show people, especially in my community where they don't get out more, they don't get out, that not only did I do it on the court, but I did it off the court. Now. Let's see if you can do the same thing. And if I can do it in the classroom while traveling to 75 countries, <laughs> there's no reason why you can't do it being in the classroom every single day. So it was, it was, it was a challenge for me, but I like challenges and uh, I'm happy that I did it. Wow. That's, it's, it's crazy how full circle things in life go. It's, you know, you, 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 uh, Go on your visit, visit Times Union Center, and then have all these, you know, great, obviously, as we'll talk about in a few minutes, great times at the Times Union Center, birthdays, you know, graduation. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but uh, talk, to, talk to me a little bit about, you know, a lot of people when they learn about the Harlem Globetrotters, that's the first time a lot of people see basketball, you know, because it's, you know, it's been, been around so long. What's a tryout like? I, I imagine it's just a bunch of ball handling, a lot of shooting deep threes, but I could be wrong. Just strictly basketball. Really? That's all tryouts was. They didn't even, <laughs> no tricks at all. Here, guys, here, you're on this team, you're on this team, just play. Wow. Just play. Because we're all great basketball players first. And we have to. We have to be great basketball players because we're following such, you know, greats. You know, we're following great basketball players in the past that was able to be with the Harlem Globetrotters. And um, I'm happy that I was able to show them my skills. You know, um, like I remember playing in a game and I made like eight, nine, three pointers in a row. And then I passed up one of them. And the coach was like, you're such a nice guy. Why are you nice? And then, you know what I mean? I'm just like, well, you know, eh, you know, so uh, I think that right there, you know, I, I was just, I just, I needed to just go out there and showcase my skills, man. And I did it. And uh, that's all it was. I, I didn't learn how, they, they will have their dunkers and, and tell us to throw oops and stuff like that. But all of the, the learning happened once you made the team. And the, being on the globe charts, man, that was hard, man, because it was like learning basketball all over again. I had to learn how to spin the ball on my finger. I had to learn how to catch the ball on my neck. I had to learn to make all these crazy tricks, half court, things that I never really did before. I only knew how to put the ball in the hole, which is important. But with bas with the Globe Charters is you have to showcase your skills, you have to connect with the crowd, you have to um, uh, play basketball. It's like you had to do so many different things. And one of the things that the Globe Charters taught me was it taught me how to be consistent every single night. Every single night we played. Sometimes we played two times in one day. Um, and it taught me that I had to do it every day because 
it could be someone's first time watching me play or it could be someone's last time watching me play. So it was important that I made it memorable. Um, and I had every opportunity. So now I just translate that over to my real life. And every day I'm just trying to be the best version of myself. Man, that's, that, that's pretty cool to hear the, the behind the scenes look of it a little bit. I'm, I'm curious about, if you don't mind, I want to know like a typical schedule, like a day, but also like a typical month schedule. And you can right. kind of go during the season, but just yeah. to hear how, you know, how deeply involved and how much practice time goes into it. A typical day, it all depends on if we're overseas or not, but a, I'll, I'll give you a, a double header day. So what happened will be, usually our double headers is at two and seven, something like that. We got a two o'clock game and then a seven o'clock game. So we'll get to the gym at like nine o'clock, all right? 10 o'clock at the latest. We'll practice for an hour on any tricks or anything that we feel we need to work on that maybe we didn't do that well the game before or maybe per individually we need to improve on. And then after that, we have like something called Magic Pass, which is pretty much uh, um, extra for fans. You know what I mean? Like they, it's like a meet and greet yeah. where they meet you, they get to go on the court with you and do things like that. We have that, and then that meet and greet happens for about an hour. And then from there, we're trying to get warmed up. And then we have our game. And then after that, the game lasts about two hours. After the game, we have a 30-minute autograph session. Every game, we have a 30-minute autograph session. And then we're going back to the back. We might, we'll get like a, a lunch, <laughs> nap, if we want. <laughs> then back again. And it happens quickly. Um, and then we get back to the room at like 10 o'clock at night, you know, um, it's tough, man. It's a tough schedule and it all depends on where your next game is will depend on how early you get up. You know, that next game can be two hours away, five hours away, you know, it, it all depends. And then we're sleeping on the bus and then we're doing it all again the next day. Um, but it's a tough schedule. You have to mentally be right. My first year, man. It was rough. It was rough. Like it was to the point where I was so tired. I remember sleeping on the bus and I heard everyone talking, but I couldn't open my eyes because I was so tired. And it was scary. Like I'm like, yo, am I dying? Like, <laughs> why am why can I not open my eyes? Why is my body not moving? But I can hear them saying, All right, Tay, let's go. Let's get up, fly. You know what I mean? But like, it takes time, you know, your body's just not used to it. And, um, you know, you start learning from the vets, they teach you how to do it. You know what I mean? Because you can't go out and party all night if you can't, if you can't perform the next day. Some people just can't do that. Other people can. But when they start seeing that you are not yourself and you're not giving the crowd your best and you're not performing, they cut that off, you know? Like, you can't do this. Don't, don't try to follow us until you can get this right. Uh, because those fans rely on us. Those fans don't care if you had two games before that. They paid that money to see you right then and there. And the best time to be a Globetrotter is right after Christmas. Because you're always someone's Christmas gift. Mm. You know what I'm trying to say? So we always leave Christmas morning and we're mad. Because that's our time with our family. Yep. But do you think to yourself, I was this little boy's Christmas gift. You know? And it's our responsibility to go out there and prove to him or her that Santa gave them the right gift. And uh, it was motivating knowing that you're about to change someone's life. You literally are about to change someone's life during that time, even though you're leaving your family. But um, it, it, it came with the territory and I loved it. You know, talking about obviously with the globe trotters and you know, the trick shots and you were obviously known for the four point shot that was implemented probably, was that in the beginning of your career or did they implement once you? Yeah. It was a second, it was a second, my second year. Wow. So my question is, 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 did you ever feel pressure going into a game knowing I got to hit these shots? You know, the fans are coming to see me hit these deep shots, hit my trick shots. Yeah, a little bit. Um, but when you practice it so much, it's just nature, you know, and shooting was my thing. Like yeah. I'm pretty sure I hit a few four pointers at Sienna, you know, without <laughs> knowing that it was a four pointer. Yeah. Um, 
So that part of it was easy for me because it played to my strength. And one of the reasons why they called me Firefly, I light it up with my shooting and everything. It was the other stuff. It was the tricks that I never did before, mm -hmm. but I had to go home and practice it all the time. And uh, then it became like, I'm able to catch it on my neck, flip it in the rim. I'm able to hit it off my butt into the rim. I'm able to flip it between my legs into the rim. I'm able to just do so many things that I love. But the globe trotters, you're never competing against someone else. It was always me competing against me. Mm -hmm. It always was like, okay, you tell you, I have to be, I have to get this. What do I need to do? And uh, I practice long hours, man. And it's always good when I'm able to do things that I know no one else can do. And I'm able to do something that I know can change somebody's life without me even speaking or saying a word. I can spin the ball on my finger and automatically it changes someone's life. Even my son, like I spin it and he's <laughs> smiling and laughing without me saying a word. It's so crazy what a basketball can do. And I'm happy that I was able to take that path and I'm able to bring it to my home, my community, to Sienna, and I'm able to separate myself and let people know that I couldn't have done it without everyone that's been in my life, you know what I mean? Man, I tell you, that's, that, you know, that says a lot about you, your skills, and, and really into, you know, you making an impact on people's lives. I feel like you've done that on the court, but also off the court as well. Uh, I'm not sure if many people know about you started an anti-bullying program. Talk about, you know, how that's began and, and, and where it is right now. Uh, well, the anti-bullying program is pretty much just like a spinoff of what I was doing for the Globe Charters. What people don't know is like what you see us do on the court is really probably 40% of being a Globe Charter. We go visit hospitals. We go to school visits. We're ambassadors of goodwill, you know, so that in itself is, isn't publicized as much as it is what we do on the court, but it follows you for the rest of your life. So we all, we have a um, anti-bullying program and I said, you know what, I can do this when I finish. So I just pretty much just started something that's called Tay, T-A-Y, and each letter is an acronym that stands for something important. The T stands for talk, the A stands for ask questions, uh, and the Y stands for you. So all I did was kind of like put that together and I'm teaching them ways that they can prevent bullying from happening in and out of school while having fun with them. And it changes their life, man. You know, like I, I felt like being a globe charter was something that I was meant to be because I've always been in my community. I've always been changing lives. Now all I did was take it from being in little Kingston or, or small Siena and just doing it all around the world. Now I'm, bring, I'm able to bring my world experience back to my hometown. And uh, once you're a globe charter, you're always a globe charter. And uh, the thing about it is I don't have to be fake. When I go out there on the court with the globe charters, I don't need to smile and be fake just because it's what I'm doing when the lights are on. I'm like that all the time. And that's what makes it real. That's what makes it genuine. And that's why I feel like people respect me so much because I'm real. And that's how I, and I also want to be able to respect people the same way if they're real. I don't like fake people, man. Mm -hmm. I mean, all you, you guys might agree as well, but I don't like fake, you know, like it has to be, in, it has to be who you are because if I trust you, I want you to give me your real. And if real is being different than how I am, then I'm okay with that. But don't be fake. You know what I mean? Same thing of what's happening, what's all going on right now in the world. If me and you are thinking differently, I'm okay with that. We don't have to be the same way. But don't say you understand me, you agree with me, just to be on my side. I'd rather you tell me you want to learn from me or how does it feel being black or how does it feel being an athlete or a basketball player so I can teach you and I can tell you because I love learning from other people, man. Like, I feel like that's what I loved about the Globe Charters is every country I went to, I wanted to learn about their culture. I wanted to learn about their language, about their foods, about how they live because it's different than us. And that's the beauty of it. <laughs> um, so... I love it, man, and I, 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 I cherish every moment of it, and I think that's what made me the person I am today. 
growing up, did you ever think the game of basketball would bring and show you what, what it has, you know, in, in your time already? Never thought this. <laughs> never thought this. I mean, from where I grew up at, it was either sports or nothing. Like, it really was. Um, you know, uh, and even sports, even the best players were still getting pulled to the streets. You know what I mean? Like, so it, it was almost like, especially when I saw a black person, I always thought athletes, I thought sports. I, I just felt like I needed something. And my mom always said, we need to get you out of these streets. You're going to the Boys and Girls Club. And I went to the Boys and Girls Club every single day. And it's pretty much like the YMCA or whatever people have at their, in their community. But the Boys and Girls Club, it gave me a place to get off the street and a place to play basketball and do something I love. That's where the game of basketball ended up forming for me. And I told you before how I want to instill the love. I loved it so much that I put the time in to get better. And that basketball led me to a full scholarship. It led me to some great people, some great coaches. It led me all around the world. And it's, I tell people, like, even when I retired from playing, I could have still kept playing for another five years. Now, you had a unique experience at Siena. Just like myself, you got the chance to play for two different head coaches. Talk about that experience and what you learned from each of them. The Lanier and McCaffrey, I'm going to be honest with you. I don't really remember. I remember my time with Lanier, but it was my first year. Mm -hmm. And it was a tough first year because I was transitioning into college life, study halls, hard classes, just the environment. And then on top of that, we had a six and 24 season, which made it very difficult. And everyone knows when it's hard on the court, it's hard in the classroom, <laughs> it's hard everywhere else. So my time with Coach Lanier, he was a great guy, but I also saw him stressed throughout the process because he felt the pressure. And uh, I think it, it, it took away from my moments that I wanted with him, that I went there for. But he was, what I loved about him, he was a family guy and he treated his fam he treated his players like family. Coach Lanier, Coach McCaffrey came in and did that same thing. That's all I care about. And with me being the only recruit that Coach McCaffrey did not have, like he didn't recruit me, Mm -hmm. I didn't know if he was going to accept me in that role from the beginning, but he did. And then when he came in, he, op he opened his arms with me. He said, let's do this together. And then he brought in, you know, Kenny and Ron and Alex and, and Eddie. And then, you know, Ryan Roster came in. I think Haddix had a year. Kojo still stayed for one year. Um, and I was a part of that. And that's all I cared about, man, is, I wanted him to just embrace me for that. And uh, he definitely did that. And I had some challenging times with Coach McCaffrey. Um, but the one thing I loved about it is Ron and Kenny in particular, they always had my back. And they wanted to see me out there. Mm -hmm. And they wondered why there, at times I wasn't out there. And they would talk to Coach Mac. And Coach Mac trusted them and he gave me the opportunities and now I, all I needed was opportunity man and okay. as you can see those opportunities when my name was called and it happened throughout my career but it happened during the times where my career was on the line because it was my senior year and I was able to show him and everyone else why I was the captain why I stayed why I didn't leave why I was loyal to Sienna and it all played out in my favor. And uh, I couldn't have done it without, you know, my teammates believing in me and uh, Coach Mackin and believing in me as well because, uh, you know, sometimes we got to do that for people, man. And uh, I, I love that about him. And even like Dan Taylor, you know, even having him as well, you know, as a strength coach, man, it was like amazing to just have those type of people in your corner and celebrating with you no matter what. Uh, you know, as as you said, you were you were the the lone the captain, the lone senior, and uh, I remember a time uh, the year before I came, uh, 
when Ryan tells me the story all the time, the team came out all in headbands. Oh, what, yeah. How, how did that make you feel when you saw that, all the, all the guys coming out in headbands? It was like, uh, it was um, like the tape, it was Tay Night or something like that. <laughs> it was like, um, Ryan looked funny in it, though. <laughs> <laughs> um, it was cool. Even Josh Duell looked funny in it. It was like just awesome, man. It was awesome to see because, you know, uh, I loved it, man. You know, just like going back in it, I'm like seeing a picture of all of the players going up with the number four with their headbands on, seeing the back view because, you know, people don't understand the value of pictures, man, that uh, Sienna takes or any picture that you have, even with the Globe Charter, is like pictures, man, like I love them because they always tell a story and I look at them often. And I'm just like, man, I remember that moment or I remember this. And uh, one of those was important, man, with everybody wearing the headband. And I had a great night that night as well. And, uh, you know, even though I might, I I'm not the best Sienna player to ever play at Sienna, I'm probably one of the most popular. And, no, no. and, there, and you know what, those, it's funny because Usually, the, you know, you, you, it always goes the most popular is usually the, the yeah. best player. So, you know what I mean? Um, but I felt like, again, my, my sacrifices I made for Sienna um, as a player and as a um, student. And then also being able to still play at the TU throughout my time, throughout my time with the Globe Charters made a difference as well. Like, I'm the only player on the Harlem Globe Charter roster that played home every single year. Oh, wow. wow. The TU Center wouldn't even allow them to come unless I came, <laughs> you know? And it was because I brought people to the Times Union Center to watch me play. And so it was good to see those older Sienna play um, 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 fans still coming, you know, 10 years later. That's important, man, because sometimes when you graduate and you go overseas or somewhere, it's, you're forgotten. You know, it, 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 like people are like, man, what's he doing these days? <laughs> you know, or what's he doing? Well, he just won a championship, man. He, and you know what? It's important that we, we're always updating people on Odie. It's always important we're updating people on Kenny and Ron and everybody because they're doing amazing things. The difference is I still was coming back into the community yeah. for them to see me. And I loved it, man, because you know what? A five-year-old would still, still know who Tate Fisher was as a globe charter, but he wasn't even born when Tay Fisher played for yeah. Sienna. So I was still able to do that, man. And uh, I love that, man. I love that I was able to have that opportunity. And, um, you know, I'm happy I was able to share these moments with everybody. Tay, you were most definitely one of the favorites, man. I remember when I first came on campus as a freshman, you were the, one of the first names I heard about <laughs> from, uh, from God rest his soul, Mr. Campbell, man. He, he always talked about you. Campbell. with those Man, he shared, he would, you know, talk to the freshmen and tell us about the Sienna history and everything. And you were hands down the first person that came out of his mouth every single time. That's dope, man. I, I like to hear that. I really, I don't know, man. I sacrificed a lot, man. Like even in the, even like when Coach Matt came to Sienna and a lot of people, I don't know if a lot of people know the story, but um, he wanted me to cut my hair. I had braids. You know, um, and braids was my identity, yeah. you know, in high school. You know, I was like Allen Iverson, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like everyone wanted braids, everyone had the tattoos and everything. I was like that. And braids was when people thought of Tay Fisher, they'd be like, oh, the one with the braids. You know, um, and when Coach Matt came, you know, he comes in with his own system, you know. This is what I want. We're wearing suits. When we go to away games, we're doing, you know how it is when coaches come, a lot of stuff changing the program. One of the things was you have to cut your hair. And I really was like, I'm not cutting it. Like I was, that was one, I was like, man, I might leave, you know? But I thought to myself, I don't know why he wanted me to cut it. Um, but it was a sacrifice I made. And I said, you know what? his hair and I'm not going to choose that over my education. I'm not going to choose that over my decision to be at Siena because again, this is a decision that I made. And you know what? If I got to cut it, I got to cut it. One day I just went next day. I just had it cut. People didn't know why people didn't, 
They question me for it. You know what, man? There's, there's some things. People question why I left the Globetrotters. It is what it is, man. You know, it's my decision. Um, and if, if it's something I did and it didn't work out, okay, cool. I'll deal with the consequences. Yeah. But you know what? I'm my own man. It's a decision I made, and I'm happy I made it. As you can see, I'm bored anyway. Um, <laughs> I left the Globetrotters because it was time for me to leave. And I felt like I did everything I could, and I had a son. And you know what? My life still goes on, man. I, I, I did everything I can. But you know what? Cutting my hair, if I didn't cut my hair, my life might have been different. My path probably would have been different. Maybe me and Coach Mack would have never had that relationship. Maybe I would have went to a different school. Either way, this path wouldn't have happened. So I'm happy I did it because I felt like when I did that, Coach Mack said, you know what? I can trust that guy. Mm -hmm. And I also said the same thing to him. And you know what, man? Looking at it now, it's something I tell people. And uh, it happened, you know? I'm happy it did. Well, we're definitely happy you stayed at Siena because that obviously led to a, a very special birthday um, celebration for you. Talk about, you know, your 22nd birthday, playing the championship game, having an awesome game. Did you, Tell us, did you really, you felt it coming that morning? Like, did you know you were about to go off? Like, <laughs> to take us back to that. Man, I just, I knew it, man. I had that feeling. Yeah. I really did. It was like my birthday. It was the chance to win a championship. Like, that was the most important thing. It was like, birthday? This could be the best birthday gift, man, you know, for me. And, you know, 8,000 people in the crowd, six for 10 from three-pointer, ESPN. I, I couldn't have asked for a better birthday. Yeah. Um, you know, 22 points, you know. Um, well, actually, it was 21 points on my 22nd birthday in 22 minutes. Oh. <laughs> That's crazy, right? Now, like that. I had 20, now, I could have had 22 points. I could have, now, I could have had 22 points, but I missed the free throw oh. before getting taken out. But you know what, though, man? Obviously, I didn't know about that 22 pattern, but I missed a free throw because everyone was chanting happy birthday to me uh. <laughs> or I was getting taken out. And at that point, man, I was getting so emotional. Mm -hmm. I was getting so excited. I knew I was getting taken out. As soon as I got out, I hugged Coach Mack. I cried. And so much was happening during that time, you know? But... You know, it was it was a great ride, man. It was a great moment. Everyone stormed the court. So many memories, man, for Sienna that I I I I I I couldn't have written a better, you know, yeah. book on my life on all the sacrifices and all the great moments that I had that um led me to where I am right now, man. And I'm just happy I was able to share it with so many people. I feel like that's what's most important for me. And uh and it felt like it was just yesterday. And it's because people are still talking about it. Um, but that's how memorable it was. And I feel like Coach Karn is going to create those same type of memories right now for people to um, be happy about. Yeah, as you, as you said, you're going to write a book. But if, if I'm not wrong, that book, that chapter didn't end after that 22nd birthday because then you went six for six in the NCAA tournament. It's like, I don't know if you could put two better games shooting back to back like that, especially on a big, big stage like that. But talk a little bit about going down to Tampa in the NCAA tournament, playing a team like Vanderbilt, which, as we all know, no one, no one probably gave Sienna a chance except the team of Sienna. So what did that mean? Like when, once you came in and you and you hit that first one, you hit that second one, and you you knew that basket's going in today. Well, whenever I make my first one, I say it's going to be it's my night. <laughs> you know, um, I already know that from the jump, man. And uh, I just wanted, I, I knew, man, that was the opportunity, man. That Vandy game, man. I, and I also felt like people didn't know how good we were. Mm -hmm. You know, like, we beat Stanford that year, too. You know, I, and, uh, and we played Memphis that year with Derrick Rosen, and we got killed. <laughs> but, I mean, they obviously went into the yeah. finals that year against Kansas. But, like, people don't understand the games and the competitions we had that led us to when we played Vandy. It was like, they ain't, we're not scared of them, you know. And I looked at that as an opportunity, like, man, 
people don't know how good Eddie Ubilis is. People don't know how good Ron is and how good Kenny is. And then on top of that, you got Alex Franklin, who's like a beast down there. And then we got Clarence coming off the bench. And then you had Ryan, who was a freshman, but we all knew Ryan was going to have a great career at that point. And then they didn't know about me. So I knew when I came in, I knew how it was going to be. And uh, what I loved about those games is like, this has always been how it's been my whole career is I've always been an undersized two guard, you know, who can shoot. So when people see me, they're like, man, he's 5'8", five, 5'9". Five, if they put a 6'4 guy on me, or if I have to guard a 6'4 guy, those are the moments that I, I, I do my best. Yeah. You know what I mean? I'm, I'm not going to lie. At 5'9", I struggled guarding against smaller guards because I've always been the smallest. I've always been the smallest guy guarding the bigger guys, you know? Um, so whenever I had the guards, you know, if, um, you know, a six, four guys on me, I knew I could run them around. And whenever someone taller than me is guarding me, I loved it because it made me shoot the ball so much higher with so much concentration. I could never make an open jump shot, guys. So if we ever play a game, leave me open, I might not make it. But if you're on me and the pressure is on me, I am going to make that shot. And uh, that every shot that I took, there was always a hand on my face. And those are the shots that I felt like were the ones I was going to make throughout the whole entire, my whole entire career. And think about it. When you get to college and you play even professionally, how many wide open jump shots are you going to have? Not too many of them. So um, I, I was always at my best, man. I'm happy that uh, I had those games. And even afterwards, when they beat Ohio, you know, um, uh, were you on that team, Connor? Yep, freshman, yep. That was my, actually my birthday was that at midnight of that game. Oh, oh man, it's it's so, cool it's 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 <laughs> so either that next year when they beat Ohio and people say, um, man, you were part of that team that beat Ohio? I'd be like, damn right I was. Dude, <laughs> I was on that team, man. <laughs> even though I wasn't, but you know what, though? It, it's almost like, once I graduated, I still felt like I was a part of that program. Yeah. Like, even till this day, I still feel like I'm a part of it, man. And, like, uh, um, it, it feels good, you know. It feels good to still be a part of a program no matter what, man. Well, you you definitely made famous the play two game. I can tell you right now. You, <laughs> two game. <laughs> all that, that was all – and, and, you know, obviously Ryan doesn't know it. It's not a hard it, – it's really nothing complex. It's just running around, running around. And yeah. I know – because everyone told me you were unbelievable on two game. And that's yeah. what Vandy just didn't want to guard you on it. Yeah, no, the two game was like, <laughs> I loved it because Coach Matt kind of just let me freelance. All I had to do was rely on either Corey McGee or Ryan Rossiter to kind of just give me a little bit of space to just get my feet right. And as soon as it touches my hand, I don't care where that person is. <laughs> If I felt like I had space, I'll shoot it. And Corey and them, that's pretty much where they were picking up their fouls from. So I'm sorry that maybe they get two fouls and go on the bench. Yeah. And they're like, I didn't even get a minute in the game. But you know what, though? They wanted to see me do good. That's what I loved about my our team is that no one was selfish. It was like, okay, this is your time. Okay, after that, it's my time. Everybody picked their times. Everybody helped each other. And I think that's what made us great, man. And you know what? You can't find teams like that, that, that they care about the team and the program more than the individual. The individual is going to happen as long as the team is right. Mm -hmm. um, and, and we did it, man. It was a great team. And I don't know if that team would be duplicated again, you know, or at least those four years, Coach Mack did an amazing job with this, man. Pretty historic. <laughs> Y'all yeah, were definitely special. Like, I, I tell a story all the time, but it was fun to watch you guys ruin my, my bracket before I knew about Sienna. <laughs> but uh, but let's talk about your game a little bit. You know, obviously a true basketball head. Um, you know, you've been around the game your whole life. A great, great shooter. How would you think or how well or how much you're like, man, today's game, the three ball is, you know, the biggest thing now. How much more efficient do you really think you'd be in today's era? So, I mean, your second all-time 
I think you, no one's catching you at first, in my opinion. Man, second all time. I had opportunities to get that first one. Man. Oh, okay, okay. Man. But you know what though, Scott Knapp, I think is first. Yep. Um, and I'm behind Scott. I couldn't have been there a better person. You know what I mean? So I'm happy that I'm even in the same category as Scott Knapp with shooting because one thing that we know, shooters will be able to shoot forever, man. You know, but it's also one of the hardest skills to do is shooting. Um, but I'm gonna tell you what, the three pointer is so much easier for me now that I've been shooting four pointers. <laughs> okay. So much easier, man. <laughs> and uh, I mean, it really is, man. And I'm like, why does it feel like I'm so much closer? Um, but it just comes with a lot of reps, a lot of practice, playing in front of people, tons of, and that's the one thing I miss about the Globe Charts. I miss the atmosphere. That's even what I miss about the Times Union Center. I miss the atmosphere. I don't miss traveling. I don't miss playing because I can still do that. I miss the 8,000, 10,000. I miss all of those people there cheering you on. Um, but it, it, you know, you still have it. They're just not there all in one place. You know, like you guys are still cheering me on. I'm still cheering you guys on. We're just doing them from different places. And um, it's just not all in one, um, in one setting. But uh, it's there, and uh, the shooting is always going to be there. I don't know how my son is going to do. I don't know if he's going to be a kid. <laughs> I don't know. Right now, you know, he's bow-legged. So his defense isn't going to be that good right now. We're going to be working on that. So I got I to gotta work with him on his, you know, his, his legs right. You know what I mean, Connor? I can't have him out there being, you know, bow-legged trying to slide his feet. Yeah. But, uh, <laughs> I, you know, everything right now, man, it's all about him, like honestly. And I'm okay with that because I've always been that person that's been thinking of other people first. But it's all about my son, man. I want, I want him to be great, you know? And uh, I think that he actually, he has, I'm always gonna say, I'm not gonna be that guy that's gonna think that my son is gonna be, you know, or think that my son can do it all. I just want him right now with COVID happening, I just want to be able to give him as much exposure to things as possible. I wanted to do one more year with the Globe Charter so he can watch me play. Mm -hmm. I wanted to be able to get pictures with him because I have teammates that have their families come and it's like a great moment when they can do that. But I felt like it was time. I felt like if I didn't leave this year, I was heading into my worst year, you know, just cause I felt like it was time. You know when it's time yeah. and I didn't want to force it. And even if I did go back, COVID would have stopped it anyway. So I'm happy I just did it on my own terms. I'm happy COVID didn't stop my my uh, my um, professional career, and I'm happy an injury did it in my career. I'm happy I left healthy. I'm happy I left happy, and I'm happy I left on my own terms. Not too many people can say that. And that that's that's what's most important. You know, you you walked out when you know it's right. And we we had Ron on a, a couple of weeks ago. He said the same thing about his son. I said, you know, you know, is he is he running yet? Playing basketball? He said, I don't care what he plays. Whatever he wants to do, I'm gonna support him. You know, I, he's like, I hope he plays basketball, but if he wants to play baseball, then I'm gonna have to learn the game of baseball. <laughs> yeah, and that's true, man. Like now, you know, I, and, and you know, when you're a father, your, your mindset's different. He's gonna, my son is gonna love basketball because it's what he sees me do and watch every day. That's what I, that's how I end up loving it from my father. But I'm, I was already out there, you know, having a little T-ball and yeah. the bat on. I'm not good at baseball, but I'm better than him. <laughs> you know what I mean? I'm better than my son. <laughs> so I might as well just go ahead, put that T-ball, let him just swing, teach him to kick the ball, teach him to throw, all that simple stuff, that's motor skills and stuff. Yep. Let him just do it, man. Like be a kid and, and let the rest happen, man. Like, I'm a father, man. Like, that's still a job within itself. And I want to be great at it. I like, I felt like I was great in everything else. Now I want to devote this. I want to be a family man. And I felt like I earned it. And uh, I already, I don't know. Um, you know, Connor, I don't think you're a father yet. No, not yet. <laughs> yeah, Ryan, are you a father? Nah. All right, so, you know, we, we good, man. You know what I mean? Guys, don't rush that. Don't rush it. Listen to what I say, man. Don't rush that thing, man. You know, but uh, you guys are going to be great at it, man, especially when you're hearing it from, you know, me and Ron and Alex and 
whoever else, man. Like, and then one day, man, we can like bring all of our, our families together, man. I think that that's cool, you know? I, I, I really hope that that happens one day because that's when I say a true family is real. You know what I mean? Yeah, um, I, I know there's a motto that I, I always, you know, back on your shirts back in the day, I always used to see it. So I've always meant to ask you what this motto means to you, but it's sweat, sacrifice equals success. What did, where did that come from and what does that mean to you? Um, I learned about it when I was in Five Star. Um, and uh, it's something that just stuck with me. And it's something that you can even do in your everyday life. You know, like sweat plus sacrifice equals success. You know, go out there, sweat. You know, like it doesn't have to be basketball. You know, we're sweating all the time, man, whether it's at work or whatever it is. And we obviously we sacrifice a lot. I already told you about the sacrifices I had to make. People are making sacrifices right now just through COVID. Just through COVID, making sacrifices by staying home because their kid has to do virtual training, save it, you know, doing their changing up their job schedules or their um or their um um you know, their work schedule, their times, their relationships, whatever it is, man, we got to sacrifice things in order to be successful. You know, we can't be stubborn. We got to give up some things as well in order to be successful. And as a parent, it's all about sacrifice. And that's why it's easy for me because I've been doing that already. When you have, when you're a father, you're, it's no longer about you. Some people have a hard time with that because it's always me, 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 me. It's all always about me. I still want to go to the club. I still want to party. I still, you can't do that if you have a family. Maybe you can and still be able to balance it. But for me, some of that stuff has to be taken care of. You know what I mean? Like, for example, I might go train a kid. But if I go train a kid at six o'clock, I got to be back by 7.30 because I read to my son at night before he goes to sleep. There's certain things I do that is that bond time with him that I'm hoping will help him later, but it's a sacrifice that I make to be with my friends or make extra money that I'm making to be with my son. And you know what? It's easy for me, man, because I already made that commitment before I even, before he was even here. Man, I tell you that, that's, you know, that says a lot about you as a person, you know? Uh, you, you mentioned that you really love learning from other people and you have an opportunity to, to travel, you know, like you said, to over 75 different countries. What's one thing you learn from a different place that's, that will stick with you forever and that you would hopefully teach your son? Um, um, I have to say, The one thing is learning another language. Okay. You know, my wife is Dominican and Puerto Rican. Um, so my son has to learn Spanish. Mm -hmm. Now, he doesn't have to learn because there's a lot of, you know, Hispanics who probably don't speak Spanish or doesn't learn it as much. Or maybe there's some Hispanic couples, but they're not teaching their kid. But for me, because I traveled the world and I had to learn all these different languages and games and stuff, I understand the power in, of learning other people's language. They appreciate it. They love it. Even if you get it wrong, they're like, because you at least tried, you know? So I want him to learn it because in this generation, man, they're all speaking different, another language. Yeah. You know, like they're taking classes where they have to learn other. And I want him to be able to speak to his, you know, grandfather or, you know, other parts of his other people in his family in another language as well. So the power of learning another language and how, um, you know, just love is like, you know, it's universal, man. You know what I mean? Like we change people's lives by not even speaking their language, just our presence. You know, like when the globe charters go to Italy, before we even speak their language, they are up on their feet because they see us and we and they just start smiling and happy. That's how I want to be. Before I even speak a word to you, I want to be able for you to just feel my presence. I don't even tell people I'm a globe charter when I first meet them because I want them to love me for me. Yeah. 
some people I meet, they say, man, why didn't you tell me you were a globe charter? Well, I didn't feel like I had to, you know, like if it comes up, yeah, but I want you to respect me and love me and appreciate me for me, for Tate Fisher. And then from there, okay, this is what I did. This is what I do, you know, because once you start telling people you're a globe charter, they automatically are going to start respecting you. They're automatically going to start to love you. They're already going to tell you about memories. Mm -hmm. I don't want that. Not yet. You know what I mean? And I think that that's important. You know, I, I don't ever use that. I'm a globe charter card on people um, because I'm Tay Fisher before I'm Firefly and you got to respect me for me. And then all of a sudden the respect factor is there. The love is there. And then from there, we might establish a bond in the relationship. You know what I mean? Yeah. You put a lot, put a lot of love in that name. <laughs> as you, as we, as we all know, Anytime you're in the Times Union Center, you're on the camera. You know, oh, there he is. There's Tay. I saw Tay. You know, I, I'll be walking by people that, like, hey, Tay's here today. Tay's here today. You know, you're just a, you're a local celebrity. But if, if you were to go back to your four years at Siena, would there have been anything you wish you had done differently? Nope. Nothing. Nothing. Okay, yes, one thing. I wish I would have shot it more. <laughs> if I would have shot it more, I probably would have been in first place <laughs> in the shooting. But the three point, but even like Coach Mack would even say, shoot it, shoot it. You, you know, he would even tell me shoot more. Um, but yeah, but but when I was with the Globe Charters, my coach would say, Tay has never seen a bad shot before. But <laughs> I shoot it all the time, you know. But I had the confidence in myself. I knew what I was able to do. I felt, I felt like I was the man. You know what I mean? I felt like I really grown into my character with the Globetrotters. I felt like I could have been one of the best and it started with being at Siena. It was the way I left. It was the way my career went. So I went through a lot of difficult times that led me to a lot of great times. I wouldn't have changed anything. Cause like I said, if one change would have been made, I probably wouldn't have been in a situation right now. So why would I rewrite re re that book or any of those experiences, man? I wouldn't do it. And what I loved about the Globetrotters, another thing, is they kept my Siena bond together with all the players. Kenny came to watch me in Spain. Ron came to watch me in Italy. Alex came to watch me in Puerto Rico. Um, and then when I played in Florida and other states, a lot of Siena people would come because a lot of them are either going to Florida during the winter times or they're in different parts of the world and they're holding up their Siena signs. And I felt like it was always with me, man. There's no better, there's no better situation than being able to travel and still have my friends watch me play on that type of stage. It was it was amazing, man. It was amazing. I loved it. What uh were you were you a good practice shooter or more of a game shooter? Game shooter. I could not do anything in practice, man. <laughs> I, I I don't know why, you know, I, I just couldn't. But game time, I was more focused. I don't know, man. Like, I just felt, I love, I love the um, bright lights. I really did. And uh, people will ask me, am I nervous? I'm nervous before every game, you know? But once I go out there, man, it's, I just feel like I'm in my own zone. And the only thing I loved about Siena practice is I was able to be, like, the best player, you know? I was able, and you know how it was, Connor, probably. <laughs> I was able to be, like, Kiki Clark, or I was yeah. able to be, so then that's when I would shoot all the time, you know. Um, but uh, and even if it was bad shots, I used to love it. But I felt like um, it, 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 it kept my confidence up. And practicing great allowed your teammates to think that they can trust you in the game, which I think Ron and them, when there was times that I struggled, they would get me to the place where I would go from practice playing great to going in the game and playing great. And I always knew I had people there to support me, man. You know, wasn't it better? I told Ron, I think he's an all-time assist guy at Siena. A lot of them came from coming with me. Remember, <laughs> remember, he passes to Kenny. Kenny dribbles a couple of times. It's not uh, an assist. That's true. That's true. <laughs> me, I will shoot the ball, Ron. Pass it to me. You get that assist right away, man. <laughs> Yeah, but you brought, you brought up a really funny point. You know, obviously, me being a walk-on, I was always on the scout team. So, but I, as you'll know, Coach Mack, if you, you know, when you're, when you're the best player on the other team, you might, you might take shots you don't ever take. 
But if they go in, Coach Mack is livid at the other team. And it you could kick the ball in, and he was just ripping them apart. You could be standing out of bounds, but, like, if that shot goes in, you got to get up there. You know? Yep. Yep. It's no, dope. man. He, 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 he was great, man. He was what we needed. He was what we needed. Um, and I'm happy. Um, Ryan, did you – I don't think you experienced you, – you didn't have Coach Mack. You had Patso? Yeah, I had Mitch and Patso's. Mitch for one year, Patso for three? Correct. Okay, okay, good, good. So, you, But you were still a part of that Sienna run, man. Mitch was great. You know, he was with us as well. But, um, man, you know, I'm happy that you guys are doing like this, man. It's, it's pretty amazing, you know, um, that you guys are still keeping the community together. People can hear from us. Um, you know, I go to the Sienna games now. It felt weird being in the stands oh, yeah. at a Sienna game. Even I even went to a Glow Charter game and I went in the stands and was watching it from a different point of view. I was with my son. But it felt good, man, because I'm able to be a, a fan of something I was a part of. But it's weird because you get to hear what fans actually say. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, like the one time when the fans were like, Manny, don't shoot that. Tay, you agree? I said, oh, I guess. I don't know. You know. I don't know. He said, would you have shot that? I said, probably, but I don't know. <laughs> you know what I mean? But it's, it's, it's always awesome to be able to be in the stands. and Because when you're in the stands, you get to see how many people are actually there. You get to see the, you know, when you're on the court, man, you're just like, you don't really get to feel, um, you know, the atmosphere. But I love, man. I love Sienna, man. I really do. And obviously, it's going to always be a part of my life. Now that my wife works there, it's really a part of my life. And I tell people right now, people might, like, she's the, since she works there, she is, she's representing Sienna. She's active. You know what I mean? Me, I'm like, I'm like behind. You know what I mean? I'm like, she's the one holding it down for us, man. So, and I don't mind being behind because she also graduated from Sienna. She's in the same program that she was in. She's holding it down. So I love to tell people that she's there and uh, represent Sienna as well. And it stays within the family, man. And that, that's what it's all about. That's, that's the true circle of life. It comes around full circle. And that's, that's definitely awesome to hear. Um, let's talk about, again, the TU again. Was there a difference? Maybe this is a little bit crazy question, but was there a difference playing as a saint versus as a glow trotter in the TU? Um, was there a difference? As in what? As in? Um, Just the vibe. Um, the vibe. Yep. <laughs> um, yes. Yes, it was. <laughs> because as a globe trotter, I don't know, man, like, the vibe was different because as a globe trotter, I'm a different player. Mm -hmm. So now I'm there entertaining. And my mindset is like, okay, I have to go out there and make sure these people remember me. But not only that, most of them are all here to see me. <laughs> you know what I mean <laughs> and a lot of them are all younger older and they only get one time to see me you know what I mean because we only come once a year yeah you know whereas when I was at Siena that was our home game so if I had a bad game I could probably make it up the next game and um you know uh um in my mindset was okay I'm gonna play D I'm gonna lock this dude up Whereas at a Sienna game, it's like, okay, I'm going to wait till you get to the free throw line. I might pull some points down. <laughs> you know what I mean? Or something that's comical to the, to the game of basketball that would make people laugh. So I'm happy I was able to be at the TU Center from the competitive side and from the entertainment side and from the graduating side. I saw it from all different angles, and I'm happy I was able to make a difference in all different ways. You know what I mean? And who knows? I might be at the TU Center again for something else. Who knows? I don't know what the future is going to hold on what else I might be there for. But I'm happy to say, and I think I can really say, the TU is home for me. It is home. You know, Sienna's home as well, but the TU, that's home. Because I we never played at the Arc. It was at the TU Center. You know, Sienna never played at the Arc. It was the TU Center. 
when I graduated, I graduated from, you know, at Siena, but then I also graduated at the TU Center. And um, I'm happy, man, because I'm even going there right now. Well, not right now, but um, in, the, in the future, I'll be going there to, for like uh, Monster Cars or, you know, all this other stuff, Sesame Street. It'd be with my son. And, but you know what I mean? Is what I'm trying to say is like, I'm able to experience as a, as a, as a father, as a student, as a player. I think that's awesome, man. As long as those tickets are free, man, they can't charge me. And once they start charging me, man. I was just going to say, so what, what I'm getting out of this is we should be changing the name of the building. <laughs> no, man, we can't change the name of the building, man. Um, remember, there was a lot of people that came before me. Yep. So with that being said, I know that, you know, Sienna is a – they're they're big on their alum they're big on their um even uh boosters and people that's been there for a long time there are people that are big sienna fans that even watched mark brown you know so there were a lot of legends and a lot of great players that came before me and kenny and everybody else just like with the globe charters there's me and there's big easy and there's flight time and everybody but before that, there were people who was watching them when it was Metal Arc Lemon and Curly Neal and so many of those other greats. So before it gets to me with anything, it has to run through those great people who gave us those opportunities, man. And then maybe when I'm older and I'm thir uh, you know, 40, 50, 60 years old, maybe people will remember us and then maybe we can get acknowledged in those type of great ways. But we can't forget about those people that set the tone for us, man, and be able to do what we're doing right now. Yeah, back, back when guys were wearing New Balances, you know, things have changed a lot in the <laughs> program. <laughs> Those New Balance slides or, 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 or you know, uh, the rock jerseys, you know. It's, yeah, man. Yep. You, you got it. It's, it's different. I know I've always been – I've always heard you're a big fan of the yellow jerseys. That's why they're wore so much your senior year. Yeah, man. Look at this. <laughs> There it is. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, man. I was a fan of uh, the yellow ones, man, because uh, I don't know. It just was different. And uh, you know me, man. I, I like to be loud. You know <laughs> what I mean? And the yellow was, like, loud. So, like, um, and it was, we had those three jerseys, you know. So, it was, like, the green, the white, which were the standards. And then all of a sudden, it was, like, yellow. And it was, like, what? So yep. we wore them on those special occasions, man. And uh, I'm happy that I was able to um, to wear them during those times. And uh, the thing about it, man, is those jerseys were big, man, on me. You know, my like now, everything was big, I guess, on us. Because now, man, my stuff is tight, man. It's tight. It's tight. I can't even run with my son. I got to be like, dang. Um, but, yeah, man, it's just... It's all good, man. A lot of great memories, man. I got, even my man cave is like, I even have like a bobblehead. My son loves trying to pull that off. And I keep telling him, no, like we don't have too many of these. And I can't go back to Siena and find that. You know what I mean? I just can't do that these days. So uh, it was awesome to be able to have a bobblehead as well. And yep. um, to be a part of so many great memories, man. And I'm hoping that maybe, who knows, man, Siena's my home. Siena's home. And uh, I'm happy to call it home. And I'm always going to be going back to those games. And I'm always going to be cheering them on, whether they have a losing season or not. The one thing I've always learned about Siena is that once you're a saint, you're always a saint. You stick with us regardless. And I'm not going to be that bag bandwagon person that's going to say I'm not, I'm not with them. I'm going to Albany or something, man. I'm staying, with, I'm staying with my guys. I'm staying with the girls. I support the girls as well the girls program i support all the programs that that sienna has and i think that's what it's all about uh, couldn't be better said they actually they're actually going to debut some black jerseys this year they got whoa some, you know, they got they got dope. for select games they're going to be doing some black jerseys so that's that's dope man. something I something like new. <laughs> i like that man Wait. you know it's 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 good man I, I love that i love being different man you know and i love the black concept and I know it's going to be probably black with some yellow or green or something, you know, which makes it pop. And uh, I don't know. I don't know what the fans are going to think about it, but yeah. I, I am, I'm going to love it. Sure. You know what I mean? And I'm going to tell you what, if they wear those black jerseys and they win, 
Because what we off. were doing, we wore the yellow ones. We said, you know what? Let's wear it again. Let's let's wear it for those special occasions, you know. <laughs> what would you say your favorite restaurant in the capital region is? Oh man. Uh <laughs> Man, um, I'm trying to think. Uh, there's a place called, um, you ever heard of Dinosaur? Yeah, Dinosaur Barbecue. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I like Dinosaur Barbecue. Um, first time having it was in Rochester, where I think it started. Yeah. Uh, um, but I like going there. I'm still learning about um, the capital region right now, man. Because sure. being with the Globetrotters, we were always, we were yeah. always eating out. And, and in some places, it was always whatever we can get, especially when we're in Europe and there's the different time zones. So right now, what I love is I love to support, like, small family-owned restaurants, you know what I mean? And one of them is uh, um, something called the Whistling Kessler. I don't know if you heard of that. Yep. But there's a lot of places, man, because we can always go to Olive Garden. You can always go to Buffalo Wild Wings, all the other. But I'm trying to support those small local businesses if possible. I think that that's cool. I, I definitely respect that. And, you know, especially now, you, I feel like you have to with, with the current times. Yeah, man. And they always got, like, the best food, too. You know what oh, I mean? It's yeah. always good yeah. food, you know? <laughs> and there's deep. always those hole-in-the-wall spots, you know, <laughs> where you're like, whoa, okay, yeah, let me go there, you know? So I'm, 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 I'm hoping I can have a better and more answers for you, but I'm just now getting home. So I'm now trying to learn about the capital region and what they have to offer, you know? And since COVID, we can't be... Yeah. Really yeah. you know what i mean so we'll see how that goes let, let me know if you need a list i'll definitely send it over to you a couple, couple. ah that's what i like that's what i like man some hidden gems i can't say them on the air right now but some hidden gems yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what what i know you've been to uh 75 countries what's been your favorite country and why um i have to say all of them because i learned something from all of the countries but my favorite was egypt um i went there to do PR individually for a week and then the players came after for another week. So I was able to stay there for two weeks and I was able to experience it by myself before my teammates even came. So I was able to see the Finks and the pyramids and the culture and King Tut, who was someone I, you know, it, it, I, I studied that in school. So I was able to ride a camel. I was able to do so many things that the pictures looked fake because it looked so good. But, um, but well, some uh, one of the one of the countries I, I I think I enjoyed the most. Wow, you got you got quite the list, so you have a lot of options you can. <laughs> <laughs> um, but what what do you say the best arena you've ever played in was? Um, other than the TU Center, because you know that's home. Oh, yeah. I have to say, uh, the Garden, um, the Staples Center, um, wow. just because there's so much history to it. I played in all the NBA arenas, um, and then in London. There's uh, an arena called um, the Wembley Arena, which is pretty much like their version of the Staples Center. But it's cool to go in those type of places, Staples Center, Wembley Arena, um, um, Madison Square Garden, and just walk the hallways and just see, you know, Beyonce, Jay-Z, <laughs> or, or whoever, comedians all on the wall that were all in that same arena you were in. And it really shows the history and the iconic moments that you're about to play in. You don't get that vibe in every arena, but it's for those ones, I think that's pretty cool. That's that's dope, man. That, that's definitely dope. How many passports have you been through? Uh, two. I'm on my third one right now. Okay. Yeah. So I ran through two of them. One of them was about to end anyway, but for some reason I was getting stuck. In, in countries because I have this like I had this like curry chicken stain on it <laughs> so like anytime they would scan it I almost got stuck in Canada because they it wouldn't go through and uh, it was almost done anyway and the Globe Charter said we need a new passport because <laughs> you're going to get stuck somewhere yeah. so um, yeah I went through two of them man it, it's pretty cool to see all the stamps that I have on all of them Growing up, did you model your game after anyone, any NBA player, anyone growing up in your area? My favorite player was Jason Kidd, but I love to watch Allen Houston. I was a Knicks fan. My, my, my father's a Knicks fan. He's a New York everything. 
So I always watch Allen Houston in the way he shot the ball and the way it just released his hand and how efficient he was. And my dad would always just pause it and point and tell me, look how he is, look at his wrist. And I always would sit between my dad's legs, watch TV as a young kid, enjoy those father kid moments. And I used to just study it. And from there, I just started learning and was really good at shooting. And uh, I don't know, man, I just picked up on it. And it was just something that I was able to do really well. And it just went from there. So a great player to, to model the shot after. Yeah. He, he had track, <laughs> so I, I definitely understand that. Uh, Tay, you played a lot of basketball. Who would you say is the best basketball player you ever played against? I ever played against? Whether um, we know them or not. Um, I have to say Derrick Rose, man. Okay. <laughs> Like he was that the times that we played him, we had that like press that Coach Mack used to do. And he just we just always beat it by himself. Mm-hmm. You know, and we had to get out of it. Like he would just beat us through. And him and CDR and uh Dorsey and Do- Dozier, <laughs> like that team, like they were so good and he was so good. We went up. I think we, we might have went up like 10 nothing to start the game. The coach called, Their coach called a timeout, and I don't think we scored for the whole half. <laughs> like, and we were in there like, yes, I knew we can do this. That's what I'm talking about. Da, da, da. But like, that showed the type of team that they had that their 12th man probably would have been our best player. That's the type of program that they had during that time. And uh, obviously, Derrick Rose was phenomenal and was a leader on that team but he didn't even score the most. He just showed how quick and how efficient he was in the time that he played against us. That made me say, damn, he's, he's good. <laughs> you know what I mean? You know, when you come across great players, they don't have to score 30 on you. They just show it to you in just small ways. Yep. And I have to say that was probably one of the best players I played against, especially considering the type of career he's had in college and in the NBA, despite his injuries. Yeah. Who would you say the best player at Siena is ever? Oh, man. I, I, I don't know from other people, obviously, considering that there is Mark Brown and everybody yep. else I never played against. But, man, if it's not me. Um, <laughs> I have to say it, it's Kenny was tough, man. Kenny was tough. Kenny was very – Ron had, I feel like, probably the most potential. We didn't – Ron just didn't have Kenny's work ethic. Kenny's work ethic was amazing. Um, now, if Kenny didn't – if before Kenny was there, Jack McClinton was yeah. amazing. He was <laughs> a gym rat, man. And as you can see – he was probably one of the best ACC players at Miami when he left us. That showed you how good he was. But once he left and Kenny came in, it just we just kept flowing with it. But again, Kenny's play allowed Ron to be probably one of the best point guards. It allowed Ryan to be probably one of the best rebounders and Odie to also do the same thing. So I felt like even I feel even me saying Kenny was probably one of the best players. He, his play allowed other people to be the best in their position. You know what I mean? With me being the shooter, being one of the best three-point shooters, Ron being probably one of the best point guards, um, you know, and then Ryan being probably one of the best rebounders and Alex being a better, one of the best rebounders as well. So everybody played a role, but it came off of Kenny's play. That's what made us great is we were great in all areas in in um you know all time in Siena history, all on one team because <laughs> of what everybody was able to do. And that's perfect. You said that because that leads me to my next question. Because you guys had a squad from top to bottom. If you could choose one Siena Saint to play with that you haven't, who would it be and why? I wish I had a chance to play with Odie. Okay. I do. Um 
obviously there's other players as well before me, but I wish I had a chance to play with him. Mm -hmm. I felt like he, his play was what we had on our team when I was playing. You know what I mean? If we would have had him, it would have made it even better. But he was, he was, he was really good. He was really good, man. And uh, when we played, we played against like Jason Thompson, mm -hmm. you know, who played for Ryder, but then ended up playing in the NBA. Like, I felt like Odie was like, would have been like a great matchup for him because when I was a senior and Jason Thompson was a senior, we had dual, you know, Ryan was a freshman, but Jason Thompson was the best in the league at that time. Yeah. And he was the biggest as well that can do it all. That's how I felt Odie was at Siena when he played. Mm -hmm. He was like pretty amazing. So I wish I had a chance to play with him. Even though I didn't, I still watched him play. I thought he was great. But I played, I played with Haddix in them. You know, I played with some other greats. So it's pretty cool, man, you know, to be able to do that. Uh, if, what, what would be one piece of advice you'd give to someone playing at Siena right now? Um, enjoy the moment. Enjoy the moment um, and try to keep, try to bring back what everybody wants. They want, they want a championship. They want to travel and see us in the NCAA tournament. Sienna people will drive or fly anywhere. <laughs> we know that already. So let's give them that. Let's give them that. I don't want you to just drive to Ryder. I don't want you to drive to St. Peter's. I want you to fly to Tampa. I want you to fly somewhere else. I want you to see us, take that time off, go fly and come see us play against one of the best teams in the country. Because once you get to the NCAA tournament, you're considered one of the best teams in the country. Yeah. Let's put Sienna back in that same type of, um, you know, atmosphere so we can compete against one of the best and see where we where we um where we rank at but we got to get there first because we want it and i want to experience it you know i did it as a player but now that i'm done come on let's do it i'll fly i'll travel that's what i do <laughs> i don't have to do it with the globe charters man i can do that right now with my family and stuff man i want to be able to do that and i think they have the team to do it they had the team this year if covid didn't hit but you know what there was a lot of other people going through the same thing. Let's just make it happen so we can say it wasn't a fluke. We deserved it last year. Let's repeat it and try to make it happen again. And I promise I'll be there to watch it. Yeah. Yes, sir. I'm right there with you, man. <laughs> when we make the tournament, I'm going to flight, a hotel. I'm definitely there. I just need Carm to look out and leave some tickets at <laughs> <laughs> Exactly. Exactly. Uh, so... Episode seven, you know, we've had tremendous uh, guests here. Drop a name of someone affiliated with Sienna basketball that you love to see as a guest on the podcast. Um, hmm. I would love to see. I mean, if you guys could make it happen, I would love for you guys to get Mark Brown on there. Okay, yeah. If you guys can, you know what I mean? I got a chance to meet him in the Legends game, you know, which Sienna did. Might have been six, six, seven years ago. Um, he still got it, you know. Um, but he was a part of the big run that Sienna had that people remember. So I would love for you guys to get him in so he can talk about his experience. But not only that, he can talk about maybe some of us that he had a chance to play with in the Legends game or maybe some of us that he's been watching because we all still love him. And like you always said, man, you don't have to be the best player to have the best memories. He was one of the best players and had one of the best memories. So it's only right that you guys can try to get that. And it also will allow people like us to not forget about people like him. Yeah. I think that'd be cool. And if you can't, try to get, you know, try to get as many of the people like um, you know, Alex Franklin and some of them in there, you know, I see you guys had Dan in there and I thought that that was cool. You know, somebody different, somebody that saw things from a different point of view. And we all still lean on Dan. Dan actually came to watch me play in Atlanta. Okay. Okay. So it was always good because I left him tickets on the floor with his family. And it's like, man, the people who were supporting me that was right there with me can watch me with their families at an NBA arena 
and not too not too far from where he was sitting, um, Ludacris was there as well. So it was like cool, Luda. man. You know, when you play at those NBA arenas or anywhere, you get you know I met like the Undertaker, I met Two Chains, I met Ludacris, I met so many people, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, so many wow. celebrities. They come to the game and they look at us as celebrities. They look at us and like, man, you guys are the best, man. So like, we look at them like, really? But you know what though? When we got on that red, white, and blue, and we're representing America, and we're representing an a, a, a organization that's been around for 93, 94 years, I can see why they look at that and that look at us in that light. So um, it's pretty awesome to know that, you know. That that leads me to my last question. We'll leave the the fans on suspense. <laughs> Globe Trotter, you hung up the Globe Trotters. Could we see Tay Fisher join the WWE or something in the future? Hell no. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, guys, but <laughs> we won't we won't hold out hope on that. <laughs> no way, man. Hey, I am loving it from where I am right now, man. Um, but the one thing I have to say, man, is I have a list of things that I want to do. You know, obviously we all do, man. We all got a bucket list. And one of them is going to WrestleMania. Um, and it's because it's that excitement. It's that environment. You know, it's, since I'm a globe, since I'm a globe charter, we're entertainers. So I love watching entertainment. You know what I mean? I love going to shows and watching things because I see it from a different point of view. I see it like, man, that person just messed up, but you didn't notice because they kept going. You know, they don't want you to mess up. Or I just like to get that feel because that happens as a glow charter. So when I'm watching wrestling, I love entertainment. I love things that people can't do. I love high flying stuff. I love that type of environment. And I also think growing up as a wrestling fan also helped me be a great globe charter as well because I was able to pull the audience to who I am. And, um, you know, watching The Rock and everybody, man. We all watch Stone Cold, The Rock, everybody, Hulk Hogan, whoever it is, man. And uh, hey, man, that's all entertainment. And I'm going to tell you what right now, everybody needs entertainment in their life. You know, so why not watch wrestling? You know, maybe you guys should watch it because right now you might feel like you're there because nobody's there anyway. So. <laughs> 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 no, we know. We definitely. We definitely appreciate your time. Thank you for joining us. Uh, you had some very, very good stories, very unique stories uh, for the listeners. Uh, don't forget to subscribe and listen to wherever you listen to podcasts. Um, but we definitely appreciate your time, Tay, and it uh, means a lot to us. Thank nah, you. Man, thank you guys for having me. I appreciate it. And I'll be following up with you guys, man. Thanks for doing this and uh, keep doing it. Thank you guys for doing an awesome job.